Hi everybody. Hi everybody, how are we doing? It is Chris here and Amanda and we are here doing our weekly uh, PB Live. It's the first one in the office for a while, we've been mm. out and about for a little bit which has been very exciting, obviously yeah. Professional Beauty North and Ireland have been. Yeah, and a few events as well, so Eve was at South Lodge um, yes. talking about sustainability and yeah I did one with um, Salon System the other day about brow trends as well which is really cool. Yes. Um, but today we are going to have a special guest on yes. talking about a really interesting topic. But just before she joins us, um, we just wanted to mention that we've put up a story on our website today about um, a new initiative which we want to launch. And we just want your feedback on it. Yes. Um, so so it's, it's talking about um, the, the, the issues and, and the challenges with modern slavery in nail salons and and the and the industry the beauty industry as a whole we know that it is uh, mm. that there have been issues with it and it is something that we know unfortunately still goes on so um there is an article on the pb website we're going to link to it through facebook on instagram as well so it will be all over there um we'd love to hear your feedback on it and mm. just let us know because we really we want to push forward and make changes yeah. happen or at least have some kind of an impact I mm. think is, is our end goal. We want to the industry and yeah. support you guys so it would be really great to know your opinion on it. It's a very short survey um, that you've got to fill in with a few questions in it yes. all, um, but we would really appreciate your input. But now it's time <laughs> for a very special guest. So once yes. again we have a really really great guest joining us. Let us bring her in. Mm-hmm. What? Let's host, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Connections will all be good. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Coming in in just a second, please go over. Hey! Hi! Hey. 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 I'm fine, how are you? Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can, okay. yes. Good, so good. just for anybody who's joining in now, or anybody who's going to watch this later, so this is DJ Ayadeli, the founder of the Black Skin Directory, and um, she's an expert in skincare in our industry, and we just wanted to talk to her today specifically about treating black and dark skin types. Um, so DJ, it'd just be great if you could outline for us some of the key differences therapists should be aware of when treating uh, darker skin tones and things that they might not necessarily realize. Sure, sure. I mean, in my experience, so yes, I founded Black Skin Directory, but I'm also an aesthetician, that's my day job. <laughs> and in my experience, I find that a lot of black women um, and darker skin types, the main issue that they have with any kind of skin complaint is usually things to do with hyperpigmentation mm-hmm. um, and, and, and post-inflammatory scarring. So um, sometimes the actual primary cause of the hyperpigmentation isn't so much a concern. So they might be suffering from acne, but mm-hmm. it's actually the dark marks are an issue, more so of an issue than the actual acne itself. Um, so I find um, some of my top tips are when you are treating in a salon or spa, um, it's looking specifically at the treatments you're going to do that may result in further hyperpigmentation or post-inflammatory scarring. Because darker skin tones, if you're doing things like um, peels or um, infusions or microneedling or anything like that, darker skin tones do require some some level of preparation beforehand. Because if if there's no preparation, say, for example, um, allowing that, um, client to go away with a product that mirrors some of the ingredients in the treatment you want to do mm-hmm. um you can get what we what i personally term as a melanin kickoff where right. instead of actually solving the hyperpigmentation or easing that you actually make it worse because the skin becomes inflamed because you've just sort of yeah. overloaded it with ingredients that it's not used to so I'd say to any therapist out there, the main thing is to, is to be aware that you cannot necessarily treat a darker skin tone on the same day. Whilst um, we live in a fast culture and everyone wants something the same day, everyone wants, you know, um, flawless skin on the same day, it's not always possible. And there's a lot of expectation management that needs to be done. Um, for example, in my clinic, I treat 99% of people have to come back four weeks later for their treatments. We do not do same day treatments. So those are the main things to be aware of. Um, and having that at the back of your head that the, the melanosomes in darker skin tones are just much larger and much more active. Mm-hmm. So therefore, if you inflame the skin, you're going to get that melanin kicking off again. And it, it's not going to be a controlled treatment at all. So that's, that's my main thing. And also, secondly, I'm a big advocate of sunscreen. 
Um, and you'll find that with a lot of dark skin patients, they'll say, I don't use sunscreen, I don't need to, I'm yeah. black. Yeah. Um, mm. Which isn't quite the case, you know, especially as, yes, darker skin tones, you know, may not necessarily burn the same way a, a Caucasian person would, but um, UVA rays, which is another aspect of, of, of radiation, do, does age the skin. So if a darker mm. skin tone is more concerned about hyperpigmentation, but they're, yet they're refusing to use sunscreen or they don't know about their need to wear sunscreen, mm. what happens is, any treatment you do is counterintuitive because the lack of sunscreen is going to mean that whatever they're doing to, yeah. the, with, with the dark marks is just going to worsen. So that's something mm -hmm. uh, therapists need to be, be aware of. And I know it can be sort of like a touchy subject. It can be a bit near PC. Can I really ask a black mm -hmm. person that use sunscreen? If you want the best for your clients and your patients, you have mm -hmm. to sort of adopt this open and um, frank way of speaking because at the end of the day, you do not want to be responsible for any mishaps that happen as a result of non-compliance with sunscreen. Yeah, and obviously you... Top thing, if you do not want to prep and if you do not want to use sunscreen, personally, I will refuse treatment. That's, yeah. I, I'm quite hard, yeah. you might say I'm quite hard. Yeah, yeah. Hard. yeah. That, those are my two top things and I think that's something that people should bear in mind because you find people going from, you know, clinic to clinic, salon to salon, you know, trying to get certain types of treatments but yet they don't want to comply and, and that's not it's not any good for them it's not fair on therapists yeah. either yeah i was gonna say obviously we we do have an article that you wrote for mm. pb as well which covers sort of that topic as well so yeah. if anybody is a member it is in uh it's in this month's issue so yes. um definitely yes i think DJ, something you said as well about managing client expectations i think that's so important because like you said i think people uh, expect immediate results. I mean, Absolutely. what are some, what are some <laughs> of the techniques that you use to help manage client expectations? Because I think it is quite a challenge for therapists now. You know, clients do want to see a result after just one treatment, mm -hmm. but a lot of the time it's about uh, a whole program of treatments over a... Absolutely. Time. One thing I do is that, and, and I mean, it will lead us on to something I think you, you do want to discuss. I um, always say to clients, the results that I am telling you that can be achieved I have been achieved over a clinical trial period, which is either 12 weeks, you know, 16 weeks or 20 weeks, sometimes even longer. So yes, you may experience some um, immediate benefits, mm -hmm. but long-term sustained benefits, we are looking at the period that the clinical trial was done. Because when you think about it, the brands tell us you can achieve these results after the, the you know, perfected the clinical trials and they've done that clinical trial. So mm. it's it's not right to then promise a, a client that you can achieve the same thing after one treatment. Yeah. It's yeah. not usually they're done over a period of time. So I do try and ex manage expectations along those lines and base it on the same time scales as clinical trials. But I also do a lot of basic signs science explaining you know this is mm -hmm. how skin cells work this is what the turnover cycle is like this is what you should expect you know so um you know people look at blogs and look at all these things and, and they think oh you know i can get that in a matter of days and it's mm -hmm. it's not the case or they think oh if i just over exfoliate my skin you know I'm, I'm going to get you know this radiance and flawlessness not realizing they're actually causing more damage to their, to mm -hmm. their barrier than than they should be so um I, I, I frankly, be, I, well, I frankly believe in frank conversations, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, I think another important part is home care. And is there any kind of professional ranges or particularly ingredients that are particularly good for darker skin types that therapists should be aware of? Um, when it comes to darker skin types, especially as I mentioned before, the hyperpigmentation issue, mm -hmm. we're looking at, we're mainly in the, in the main, we're looking at ingredients which are tyrosinase inhibitors. So mm -hmm. ingredients that just help to quell excess tyrosinase and excess melanin. Those are the main ingredients I tend to go for, especially when I'm prescribing at sort of like at the serum level where mm -hmm. we do the donkey's work. So we're looking at things like kojic acid, um, licorice extract, niacinamide, vitamin mm -hmm. A, um we're looking at things like hydroquinone which obviously i don't prescribe because that's a um it, it's you need a doctor or a derm yeah. to prescribe yeah. that but one thing therapists should be aware of is that black women in particular are very nervous when you mention hydroquinone because it has so many connotations with skin bleaching in the Af well african yeah. 
African, mm-hmm. West African, Caribbean, Indian, you know, mm-hmm. South Asian culture. But it's actually a very safe ingredient. And that's another place that therapists do need to um, educate their clients on mm-hmm. as yeah. well. So we're looking at tyrosine as inhibiting ingredients as key for darker skin tones. When it comes to ranges, I mean, I use Neostrata um, in clinic um, and I use Exuvians as well. But I'm mainly looking... Pe- you know therapists don't need to use exactly those same ranges even though i think they're great Mm -hmm. but i'm mainly looking at ranges that have clinical trials and have clinical data and imagery on darker skin tones so if if a brand can show me that then i'm happy to you know consider them but if they haven't because you know a lot of the questions that are behind the head of a darker skin tone person is saying oh that's great but does it work on me that's a lot of the questions you get so if you can show some imagery whether it be your own case studies or a brand's own case studies that will help you to ease the concerns of a black Mm -hmm. woman or or darker skin tone patient so those are the things i'm looking for personally i found that within the neostrata and exuvians family but for my clinic work i think it is it's a lot of doing that kind of research as a therapist and seeing what what does work and having a look at that data in particular mm. obviously isn't it that is really important so there is it's a, a key question of... it's the, i ask that a lot at professional trade shows you know can you show me your data yeah. for darker mm-hmm. skin tones you know i think it's important yes. yeah Amazing. Well, yeah. well, thank you so much for joining us, yeah, Deidre. That was you. really, really great. You're um, more than like welcome. Said, thank Deidre. you for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank Your you. skin looks great, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very I think much. It's appropriate. <laughs> 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 Got to advertise my work. <laughs> yeah. And then, obviously, if people do want to find out more about you or the Black Skin mm. Directory, where can they find that information? Literally, blackskindirectory.com. It's also the same handle on social media. And likewise, my handle is the same, DJ underscore Ayadele on social media. It's very, very easy to get hold of me. Just one Google, you find me. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. Well, thank, thank you so you, much. And we will see you all again next yeah, week. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye.